Sitting here with David Bywater. You might know him as David Meets World, or more recently, Backstock Co., the man behind Backstock Co. We're, uh, we're in his, you know, his print space. We're here looking at some of his tees. He's got every single tee that he's ever printed sitting here with us right now. Uh, so we're pretty much just gonna talk about these pieces. Some of his favorites, some of the most rare, some of the least rare, the first few Thriftcon collabs, all, uh, all types of stuff. So let's start it off. First tee. Show us the first tee and tell us what what was the inspiration? What prompted you to start Backstock? How long was it in the making before this was a physical product in your hand? Oh boy! Well, uh, you might remember uh, the old spot station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Dave and I obviously we owned a store together. So this is like sitting here just talking about stuff with an old friend. And I know a lot of the answers to these questions, but you guys might not. So tell. Them. So and actually, so what's funny about the first shirt? This isn't even the final product. Like I don't even have, you know, I don't even have the the final one. It had like more flowers coming up on the sleeves here, and just so many homies were blown away by you know what just you know came out of the basement and uh, you know like what we were putting out at the shop, and then just all of a sudden like came up with this method to print all over the shirt. Uh, just had the homies snatch everything up that I had. So this is literally the only one. Uh, that I have left of the first shirt and the idea was um, you know had really just been listening to a lot of Patrice Russian a lot of classic old e divas that summer and noticed that she didn't have any merch made for her at all couldn't find any and so then the idea kind of hit me of like well what if I made made a piece of merch that didn't happen um, merch that never was merch that never was but maybe somebody stumbles upon it and they, you know, they think that it was made, you know, back in the day. Right, and then this is obviously like a big artist too. So, you know, it's it's merch that people would want, you know, and I, but it just doesn't exist. It's not in the space. So what year was this done? So this was uh, fall, uh, September 28th, 2018 exactly. September 28th, 2018, so we're coming up on that. It's the one year anniversary next year. Four year anniversary next year, four year, yeah. Four year anniversary yeah. next year. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, definitely after I printed this shirt, you know, I mean things uh, things have changed. So it's been uh, it's been a great process. Where could you buy this shirt <clears throat> right now? When, no, no, no. When it first came out, where were you selling this? Where did people purchase this? You said it was homies. Was it everyone just coming over to your house? Did we sell them at the shop? Um, I think you had it at some thrift cons, right? You had them in some booths at thrift con. Like where did, where was this shirt sold initially? I think that like the, it definitely sold it on my personal Instagram. I don't think the website had been built and I believe that, um, yeah, a thrift con was coming up. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed vending at it. So I just kind of lumped it in with vending as I've met a lot of you guys now and Things just haven't really changed. <laughs> just uh, elevated. Just yeah, elevated. Definitely elevated. But the, yeah. what has elevated is uh, the skill and uh, learning, uh, be, learning to be able to print better. You know, I, you know, didn't really know much about screen printing. It was very self-taught, and you know, this definitely shows it. Just being a one color, but it is classic. So, I'd like to before we go through all the in between. Uh, I, I think you're right. This is amazing to see the first the first print, the first piece, and kind of where it was. Um, but sitting behind us here, we have the the drops that are coming up in Philly, the tee that is gonna be for Philly and the online drop, both version online and Philly. So let's take this one down, Dave, and talk about this. So, Cause this is the very first one. And then here is the most recent. So this is being printed this week, last week. Uh, well, no. So the this is the Philly exclusive, and it is we are done producing Amazing. it. It is up, ready. You know, wherever uh, we shipped it up to Philly, we only printed a. Raise it up uh, just a little bit so they can. Yeah, there you go. And then show that back too. Yep. So as you can see, compared to this first one, let's hold it. Do the side by side. Just uh, a lot has happened in four years. <laughs> Learn, learned a lot. Um, Both good tees. Yeah. Both good tees though, but yeah, this is a great print. 
still very self-taught. I've met a lot of uh, great printers along the way, uh, several other awesome bootleggers, and you know people that print their stuff, and you know people that are just really good at their craft. I'd like to show two things on this tee specifically. So there's two new things that you said you've done on this tee. Well, one one of them is here. It's like the uh, the texture on the letters. Yeah. So uh, I'm just uh, always trying to like push the print to just look more weathered. And so this is the first print that I tried some uh, get some close. vintage texturing on, where I like took a photo of uh, took a photo of a vintage shirt's cracked print and. Uh, pulled that out and added the texture around. Um, every shirt is a learning experience. I have not mastered the craft yet. I don't definitely want to say that. And so with this, sh after this shirt, I'll learn more for the next one. And as you've seen with this first one, I can't imagine what the hundredth shirt would yeah. look like. So. Yeah. And then, the, so the other difference with this one then was the, uh, the skin tones, right? Yeah, so I've been, really into just print technique uh a lot of people a lot of people think that the battle is in the design and you sit on your computer and you sip your coffee and you have a good afternoon designing and you send it off to your printer and you think it's done i've, I've learned that that's not it print oh, techniques inks squeegee angles additives all can make a screen print even better and so I've been studying old prints and just seeing the the skin tone being multiple colors two three four shades sometimes so this is the first backstock co shirt where me and my assistant tried a two tone skin print and you'll have to like look really close to yeah. it yeah bring it so bring it close you want to see there we go all right so the two tone yeah. yeah. So yeah, we got like a darker brown tone and we have like a lighter brown highlight tone. And uh, you know, your eyes kind of just blend that together when you see it from far away. But you know, it's things like that at Backstock Co that we're just trying to, <laughs> you know, we're just trying just to. Constantly innovating, constantly up in the game. Where's this hanging? Let me get the tongue back up. So while I'm hanging this back up, pull out, pull out one of these tees you want to talk about. Just maybe, uh, let's go first off, let's go with what you would consider the most rare backstock tee. Um, so literally by, by the numbers. You Which know, we're not gonna tell you. Just based on, uh, you know, like how many are out there and when they were made, obviously the first two, because when something starts out, not a lot of people know about it. Mm -hmm. And then as like, as people start to hear about it and numbers start going up, you know, so, you know, I, I can honestly say that if you have this one, this is uh, definitely a piece of history. Um, probably number one rarest backstock coat shirt right here. You probably won't, probably won't come up on this one. Um, I, I know a couple of people that have it and they're just, they're just keeping on it. Um, yeah. And then also with the second one, the second one, a lot like the first one is uh, just a, Single color, black and white, James Brown shirt. This would be the second rarest backstock coat shirt. This is so good. This one is like, to me, I, I, it just is Burke's shirt. I just like see his shirt and I just think of Burke. Well, <laughs> I mean, really? well, so I can actually, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Burke Visual, my number one, uh, number one fan and billboard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so these are like number one and two. Definitely. Amazing. Got me focused on uh, focused on printing shirts, and so I guess what uh, you know, being able to print all over the shirt in a garage, you know, being able to achieve this effect on a shirt from a home setup is, I think, what really captivated people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, well, if you if you if you want to ask or take get my perspective, if it looks and feels like. Uh, it's like the same reason that people enjoy like a, a mosquito head or, or a piece like that, you know? It's like, it's A, it's the print itself is gigantic, but it's very artful too, you know what I mean? It really is. It's like, uh, 
it's it looks very calculated the where everything's placed um, it's done in a great way but like the the imagery and the words like the copy that you decide to use from each artist uh, it's 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 on point you know there's a lot of people that are doing it but like when you see a backstock tee you kind of know it so a term that me and my assistant throw around a lot is uh, bootleg flavor yeah <laughs> Bootleg flavor. Does it have good bootleg flavor? And yeah. so I will often, uh, you know, see a see a colleague put out a shirt, and uh, I'll get my assistant's opinion on it and ask him like, does it have good bootleg flavor? Yeah. And you know, like there are things past the design process that will attribute to like great bootleg flavor. You know, such as just like inadequacies of pressure when you're printing with the squeegee you know such as like over here on the sleeve where the seam hits um you know you won't go into journeys and yeah. find a shirt with that on there because they won't sell it because right. it's past their standard i love it yeah, yeah. i absolutely love that look um and i think many many of the backstock coat tees have great bootleg flavor yeah Oh, of course. Um, so the let's show the top five. So here's the here's the two rarest rarest shirts that you might not Cause, come across. Because they're the oldest. They're the oldest. So naturally. So uh, when I put out a shirt, um, I mean, as as the years have gone on, kind of the the time in which I uh, accept orders has gotten smaller. So it's usually a, a day or two that I'll gather orders for these shirts and uh and then spend the month sometimes five weeks printing printing it and just losing my mind and so um <laughs> these these top five are the top five at the moment you know at yeah. this moment in time so you know in one year um i believe that this is the most common Backstock Co shirt that you might run into. The Child's Play 2. Um, and I got a, my, my family got a really big kick out of me printing this one because this movie scarred me as a child for <laughs> seven years. I, uh, I think it was like five or seven years I slept on the couch. Uh, had to be counseled. Um, didn't <laughs> like lost didn't sleep in my childhood bed for Amazing. seven years full circle then huh and so yeah you know it was just like I was, yeah i just thought it was really funny again was looking for some good child play merch looked at the field saw what was out there and just kind of like built upon that right so that was going to be one of my questions from this is is how do you choose the subjects for the shirts um well, for one, if I'm printing on the shirt, I guess this is number one rule. Kids ask me, when are you going to print this? When are you going to print that? The Ace Ventura Instagram. Yeah. And so <laughs> if, I, if I'm if i printing the shirt, I have to be interested in it if I'm staring at it for four weeks. Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't be printing something that I'm not interested in. And yeah, it would, it would be a horrible day at work. Yeah. And so, uh, and then also like, I, you know, same is with uh, when we were running running station. You know, I still, you know, I will wear the shirt. I uh, I have a couple in my personal collection. One of them faded out, but I won't produce a shirt that I won't wear. Yeah, that should be the gold um, standard. If you're making any any clothing, any product, would you yourself use it, wear it? Would you be your own customer? Yeah, and uh, you know, you know, people asking me, you know, when's the next all over print and. You know, why are you, you know, doing rap tees right now? You know, uh, it just, you know, the interests are vast. And again, like, I'm just really interested in, you know, the procedure and the skin tone of like getting a really good look. And uh, so, yeah, just kind of whatever I'm into, you know. Yeah. And uh, so this is, this is the most common shirt you might run into. Uh, up next, very big fan favorite, spawned a, uh, Count to get another Jim Carrey shirt. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. so the, for those of you who don't know, the Ace Ventura Instagram we're talking about, there's a little kid who has an Instagram that is every single day he messages David to try to get him to print an Ace Ventura T, and then he posts the DM message, and it's literally, what's the name of the Instagram, David? I think it's just uh, Ace Ventura 
backstop Cote. And <laughs> you might need to go. If you want to follow. He it. just hit day 50. Day he's 50 feeling, of asking He's feeling this down. He's feeling down. But, I mean. Uh, so, I, this uh, hopefully week, he has one of these as a consolation prize. Yeah, I mean, and I guess I, I've never done a shirt. I guess maybe Lauren Hill literally might be the first. You know, she was just on this Nas shirt that we did. Yeah. And now we're doing a Fuji shirt. But I've never done, I've never revisited a topic before. Yeah. But Jim Carrey, definitely one of the goats. And I mean, this one is so I could see, uh, I could see like a Jim Carrey, like, uh, like resume T hitting hard just because like he's got so many good movies. And uh, how, uh, how, how deep do you have to get into the Googles sometimes? Like, where are you pulling some of this stuff from? From the pages of Dark Horse Comics? Like, where, are you, uh, where do you kind of go to source these things? And then how do you know, like, oh, this is a, yeah, this is a backstock co-graphic. And how long does the piecing together of the design take? Um, Computer work. I definitely, uh, well, so for starters, and like you know, for uh, you know, for for like my few haters out there, they love to say <laughs> he just prints stuff off Google. He finds it on Google, and that's actually the the first rule. I'll I'll go to Google, I'll go to Google. You type in Jim Carrey, and you go through the first ten pages, and you go, all right, that's can't what use any that's of these, what yeah. no 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 that's what not to use. That's what I mean. I can't use any of these exactly. first ten pages. Yeah, these yeah, first yeah. ten pages of Google images, like fuck off, and so. <laughs> I've, I've definitely learned to like, I've definitely learned a couple like old tabloid photo companies yeah. that their databases are on the web still. A lot of them still operate, but. Oh, David, cut, cut, cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> you give it away all your secrets. <laughs> it's actually really cool. You can go on and like, you can type in a subject of like anything or like, uh, um, yeah, and like they have. Like they just, it's a really cool database yeah. of photos that like uh, uh, tabloid photographers were out uh, shooting it on the red carpet or promo photos. Like it's just images that I'm definitely like, you really got to dig. And or... it's kind of license free stuff. So no, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's the elephant. That's the elephant in the room that like, I think everybody, uh, you know, everybody asks, you know, yeah. afterwards, just like, I didn't even mean to ask that. I just, uh, <laughs> well, so honestly, yeah. that's why we, that's why we put them up. We, that's why we put them up quick and, uh, take them down quick. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and, and I have been served a cease and desist before. So that's usually the first step that's in, one's lying around in here. them being, them being mad. Um, Cease and desist tea. Yeah, actually really weird. It was it was a shirt that I didn't put up uh, really like publicly on Backstock Co, but our uh, our, our town's uh, hockey, hockey team. team, you know, won the Stanley Cup again. Ab, so he, David, being quick on his feet, printed up this pretty little number. Inspired by wow, so uh, yeah. vintage, what was that? I think it's a Salem. I think it's a Salem vintage, Sportswear. Vintage Salem Sportswear design. Yeah. Um, and just the lack of uh, good abs merch. And so we, me and my uh, assistant walked around the parade. After two hours, uh, got served a cease and desist. That's awesome. And When so is the cease and desist tea coming? People say that, but it's just... Uh, it's been done. It's been done. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll save that if we ever need... Uh, Once Nike hits you with something. Court funding. <laughs> yeah. the, the court funding team. <laughs> up, up, up another one here. So This is one of my personal favorites. So we got one. So we got the, the most common. Next in line. We got the third most common in line. We have uh, the only anime shirt that I've done so far. It's so good though. It's unreal. That back is crazy. Yeah, nice cowboy bebop shirt. Everybody loves the back. The back's definitely... A play, a big play on the show, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of imagery that you won't find on any other Bebop shirts, you know, definitely trying to find that and just make it look cohesive, um, you know, their, uh, their cruiser ship and my favorite part was just Ed's little like emoticons that are on, uh, on, on her computer when she's like doing the hacking. Dude, and, this, uh, this tee for me was one of the most like David designs you had done. And it, it, it felt like a little bit of a callback to plant. I know you used to like, you used to use some of this imagery and some of those the plant paintings when you were kind of like 
painting the still lifes um, and things like that. So yeah, this this one I think. I love yeah, it. and a, a lot like the Patrice Russian shirt, you know, like a promo shirt. Join the crew this fall. God, I can't even read. Join the crew this fall. Tune in only on Toonami Cartoon Network. So. Yeah, you it's know, as like if, it's as if as like Cartoon Network made the merch, right? right but yeah. you know, maybe not even merch. Maybe it's a shirt that like they gave out to you know the people on the team, right. uh, or just like the people in the building, you know. And so those shirts, uh, those shirts really excite me when I'm running into them, like a, like an authentic one at ThriftCon, like uh, like a promo shirt you had to eat fifty. Uh, <laughs> uh, frozen dinners for and count sit, chocula boxes. exactly like yeah. those th th those are really cool um Definitely. so those are kind of the top three most common that you're going to run into most right? common being like you the, the the most people have them you sold the most the windows were the biggest yes for okay. the duration that the window was open the most people flew through yeah, yeah. um yeah but uh you know the funny part, I, I get I get messaged often by kids, you know, I now realize why, you know, kids hit me up, they go, uh, I was at a party and my shirt ripped in half. You know, like some girl grabbed my shirt and it ripped in half, do you have another one? It was my favorite shirt. Yeah. So like seeing the life of a shirt and how shirts, you know, kids can say like, oh, you know, you won't find this one, you know, and yeah. like, I guess people wore them. You so know? now so, they're being resold, right? I have a lot of. Uh, They're have, all over the aftermarket. You see them at every thrift con. There's 20 boots that have a backstock coast shirt on the on the racks. I, I have a lot of people that enjoy to flip flip backstock coast shirts. I honestly I don't know anything about it. I'm too busy producing <laughs> producing the shirts. How do you um, feel about it? What do you what do you, what do you think? It's uh it's 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 neat to see. I really enjoy. I mean. To, like to hear a homie come and tell me that he sold a shirt for you know like more than I sold it to him for uh, you know based on it was a, a collector that was like really looking for that specific shirt yeah. in that specific size um, I mean hey there's I guess we're, we're living in a, a time of just ultimate reselling everything's being resold if it's cool right right and and honestly like i think it's validating for sure i mean and I, I you know i i mean yeah like kids tell me like can you reprint can you reprint a patrice russian shirt for me like i i, I really don't i don't want to take the time to go back and do it yeah. i really don't i got too much to print for the month and so it, it there is something special about uh you know producing the shirt and it being done and it like really being done yeah. And like trying to actually commit to it being like not reprinting. I see tons of competitors like reprinting uh, uh, favorite designs or whatever. And I mean, growing up, I loved collecting. And one of the best parts of collecting, I mean, you remember it. I loved collecting North Faces yeah. at Station. And when North Face started reissuing these colors and these coats the expedition stuff that i that i enjoyed collecting it, it like i don't know i was like your company you get your money but uh, it, it hurt a little bit yeah. you know so yeah. i enjoy and i think people enjoy having something that's like done being produced has it made you think about raising the price though so the You're price already fucking so one of the cheapest so out the, there the as far price, as like these other guys who are doing since, it since since Backstock started four years ago. The price has raised twelve dollars. Slowly. It's a nice. It's a nice gradual. Slowly, like like. Well, I, I mean, honestly, dude, you would. Other people are selling shirts of this caliber easily for seventy-five to one twenty-five. Because well, I, I because I think well, I'm pretty positive it's because the screen like the actual screen printing market is you know inflating with everything and right. uh because they, they're getting their shirts printed for 20 yeah, yeah. to 25 bucks they're so, actually having to go to someone to get them printed. exactly and so that's what you know i, I tell I, you know i tell my my uh, my supporters that yeah like learning how to print has been a really good blessing um 
for like having something to do every day and having people that really enjoy what I'm producing and uh, being able to produce a affordable product in a time where t-shirts are 60 bucks. Well that and just like, yeah, you know, you, there's so much more control of your art and how it en ends up being translated to the product. Because like you said earlier, you referenced, you know, depending on the angle of the squeegee, depending on the pressure. Printing technique. Like, there's so much stuff that, yeah, again, you, you really, you made the point earlier, but just to reiterate, the as a graphic designer, you, you, you're powerless to an extent when producing and making this, clo this clothing unless you have an amazing relationship with your printer because you can only do so much and make it look how you want on the computer, but once you give it to them, they have to then return the product for you. And if you're doing high numbers, you're these guys that are printing like, you know, probably selling hundreds of shirts on each drop, like once you get back 500 shirts and they're printed a certain way, it's kind of done at that point, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that, that that's just another, one more, one more thing that sets you apart. You're able to like see it from start to finish. It's, in it's, your hands. A, it's a very fulfilling process. Um, up until I get the email <laughs> of the kid who goes, what the fuck, man? Yeah. You sent me the wrong order. There's a smudge right here. There's, you're like, there's smudges all over it. Yeah. <laughs> all um, right, this one's cool. It's got a nice fade on it. Yeah, so I've been, uh, I've been, I've been really interested in like how, how shirts age. Um, and so this one's faded. I sat it out on my roof for duration of time, let the sun cook it a little bit, um, poked some holes in it. That was the color. Yeah. So for reference, if you, like that's the inside of the shirt, that's what the shirt started out as. And this is just straight sun fading, no bleach? No bleach. Um, you know, I, I sell a, a $12 PDF on how to fade with a, uh, with a certain chemical you can buy. We'll, and we'll put uh, that uh, in a link. Somewhere right here. People, sure, you, sure. YouTube people do that, right? And, You're a YouTube uh, guy, Dave. You should come on. Yeah, and so, yeah, you know, but I'm always interested in just like other ways to fade and just how to achieve the, you know, the perfect fade. The perfect You've mentioned it before. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. so yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to have 30. I might, need, I might need to leave this up on the fade farm for a little bit. I've been wanting this to have a little fade. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to do a shoulder fade. You know, and I know, I think you, I think I've seen some of your shirts have like shoulder fade. I, I bought a whole rack of hoodies at the flea that had just been sitting at the flea for who knows how, how long. And they all were just on hangers and they all have shoulder fades. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to have 30 faded Sade shirts, uh, in Philly. So some, some faded Sade's. Oh yeah. Those ones, they, they came out super good. Um, what are you fading right now? You, so you said you have some at the house that you're fading right now. What's up there right now? Uh, well, so, I mean, don't. Don't run me up the flagpole, but there's <laughs> we're, we fade uh, minor misprints and just B grades. Yeah. Um, things that the snickle prints. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> there's there's some outcasts up in the fade farm. There's some uh, some stone colds. Kind of just shirts from the last I'd say, like uh, four four months or so. Um, but but what's cool about that is like there's unlike uh, unlike uh, my normal drops like. It, you know, it's not like an order window. So right. like, it really is yeah. like artisanal, yeah. you know, like <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, out, I'm, I'm, I'm poking holes, I'm sewing up holes. Um, yeah. They're really cool. And honestly, you got to come by the booth and see it because it like on camera here, it probably doesn't do it justice. But right. Uh, right. you know, everybody loves a good pit hole. <laughs> so you, you gave know, it a pit hole, huh? You know, authentic pit hole. Nice. So yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, you did a good job with it. Um, well, uh, we're, we're gonna, in a sec too, we're gonna go back to Dave's house for a quick sneak peek of the, uh, the Fade Farm. The first uh, Halloween shirt uh, that I did, and actually, I gotta forget his name, but I did a contest. I said, whoever goes to uh, the house that is in uh, in the movie, you know, I'll, uh, I'll refund your order. And someone lickety split it out, out in LA, Popped up, Went, to, really? popped up to the front of the uh, Elm Street house. That's fire. Um, but yeah, kids really love this one. I don't have any left. Don't ask me. Um, <laughs> let's see. This one. This one. Oh, How many tags have you done? How many different tags? Oh, let's there's see. like uh, the I think there's there. been about one. there's been about four iterations of the tag, and 
no rhyme or reason why. Just kind of <laughs> if I'm, it, you know, if I have some free time, I was able to switch the tag kind of up. The first ones too. Fruit of the loom. First ones don't even have tags. They're just the regular ones. Yeah, the tag didn't come in. Here's like one that was off of the Gildan. They're like, yeah, it's like Gildan inspired tag. The Gildan. Yeah. So this one, I forget on the list. This had to be. This was. This was definitely within the first ten shirts. Um, but yeah, this was the shirt that I just kind of noticed. Like shit was. Shit was. Shit was popping. Yeah. This was the first. Uh, this was the when I dropped this shirt. It gave me enough orders to really like step back and like be able to like. This could be a take a deep thing. take a deep breath and be like, this is really cool. I'm, yeah. I'm glad people are out there like enjoying what I'm making. And so, yeah, every time I see the uh, the blink shirt, I'm always you know reminded of like uh, yeah, just how like I was like. I was crazy excited when this one dropped. I love that. That was definitely one of my questions, so I'm glad you got to that. Ah, uh, yes. This one? The, uh, the obscure, <laughs> uh, the obscure ThriftCon collab. That was, uh, uh, November 2019. Yeah. Um, we did a little pop-up at the homie fourth place, uh, here in Denver. Yeah. Uh, accompanied by a tea time pod. Only that, time you sold sweatshirts? This is the only sweatshirt. I, I actually, I think I'm gonna do some sweatshirts this year, but this was the first sweatshirt. Um, and actually I'm trying, if I, I could pull out, I could pull out the list. If you bought a sweatshirt, it's pretty rare. Yeah, yeah, for it's, sure. <laughs> it's up there on the rarity list. For sure. Um, we had a great pop-up. There was a cool display again, yeah, at the homies fourth place. This was awesome. Get, get together with David again and like, yeah, just like throw a pop-up, build it out. Remember my question as we were doing this. You know, you just gotta give it a little time. The uh, what's what's some of the coolest people that have worn backstock that that it's just it's ended up in their hands that either you've sold it to them. What are what are some of the highlights? Because there's some good ones. Uh, I mean, it, it blows my mind, and it's a, it's a true testament of uh, just something. If you make something. And it's cool. It'll get out there. It'll get to where it needs to be. Exactly. You yeah. don't need to like get on your soapbox. It's box. like the field of dreams, you know. Build it, and they will come. Yeah. yeah. So uh, shout out to the. It's a stylist or uh, several resellers who have been getting this on the backs of uh, several professional athlete players. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly. Professional athlete players. Yeah. I was gonna. <laughs> I was, I was, I was gonna uh, so my next. <laughs> I'm not a big sports guy, but maybe you can throw up photos of the people wearing them. Oh man, those guys that throw balls love this yeah, shirt. They, those dudes making goals. Um, but yeah, and then uh, I mean, I'd say the weirdest one. Uh, I remember uh, Maxo Cream. He came into our shop. Yeah, yeah. So he's still buying, huh? I mean, or somebody sold him. Uh, well, he, and he's just wearing one shirt, you know. When okay. you know, and and people people wear what they like, so he's. You know, he's like a Texas guy, so he's been rocking the DJ screw that we dropped at Houston a lot. That was really cool to see because he like fully flexed that in front of some bins or some bajillion dollar car. Really? So to, to pick a Backstock Co shirt for an Instagram flex, you know, like I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm obliged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that was the ATL tee for this year, right? So this was the Houston specific Thriftcon tee. Ooh, this is a cutoff. There's where my there's, there's where the that went. Cutoff. <laughs> He'd been looking for that one. There we go. <laughs> and then this was the Atlanta tee this year. Thriftcon Atlanta. Yeah, this the one. Uh, that one flew, man. So yeah. Lines, lines at the booth. Yeah, so this one actually uh, this one, I my favorite part of this one is tiny little Georgia. Right here. Wow, never would have saw that in the middle of the galaxy. Yeah, middle middle of the galaxy. Yeah. Exactly. There's a little Easter egg. Right. And then, uh, yeah, like so. Uh, so yeah, this is like this promotes the AT aliens again, kind of like a, a promo shirt that didn't necessarily happen, um, but we made it happen um, for one of their best albums after one of their most prolific albums. And so that's where this image came from. So I, you know, like, 
I just gotta think, like, you know, because, like, we, we've talked about, like, would you get in trouble? I just gotta think that these guys would love this shirt if it got in either of their hands, right? I personally think that if, I mean, I, I think if anybody sent this to somebody, they'd be like, that's a vintage shirt. Right, 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 right. Why are you sending me this? That's a vintage shirt, you know? Like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like it, yeah, like we go tip top, we go all the way to the bottom down here sometimes. Yeah, like I that. mean, yeah, it's really, it's really special. Um, this one, I think, is number seven. On the rare scale? Yes, so this is okay. the seventh, uh, seventh rarest Backstock Co shirt that you'll run across. Um, yeah, we need to get that list up. So that's, I kind of like this one too, because it was very, you know, the America's Funniest Home Videos, kind of left field, you know, not like a, not a musician, not like a... Well, so I learned a lot with this one, uh, you know, did this one like uh, uh, two months after he passed, I'd say. And man, there is, there is a timeline in which you can drop a shirt respectively and non-respectively. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, but people like got, people got upset about this one. People were too bugging. Soon. This was too soon. Hashtag too soon. Apparently too soon, but at the same <laughs> time, like I, I like I scoured the internet and counted up seventy-five. Like you go to Etsy, you go to eBay. Yeah. Counted up seventy-five just horrid. Yeah, designs. I was just saying none of them as thoughtful as this. Horrid designs, yeah. and so I was like, all right, let me give a whack at that. But people weren't. <laughs> people were not having it. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, grew up watching this with the fam. Really liked Bob. We sent a tape in. It never got played. You sent what was on the tape? Uh, it was that. It was Fourth of July. I was seven years old. Uh, we, uh, we were at a friend's house, and my dad was going down a uh, going down a, a, a slip and slide, and it was on a hill. And then at the end of the hill was just brush and shrubbery, and you can guess what happened. You know? Oh my God! Past the slip and slide, into the brush, into the shrubbery. Classic 90s, ha 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 ha, you know? <laughs> Do you see the, uh, have oh, you seen the new Predator? One of these other 50 T's, no, no I haven't. The one, you should watch it on Netflix. On good. Uh, Hulu just dropped the new Predator. Okay. Where, oh, you know, Mita and Mateo watched it, I was, I was. Where he comes back yeah. in the Indian time. I think they might've watched that, I don't know, or they were just watching the OG. But yeah, so this one then, here's like Predator Vision on the back. I, uh, oh man, I saw someone wearing this. Oh, at that, you know, that Vortex show, that Meow Wolf show the other day. Yeah. There was someone. This one, this one, glow, this one's a good black light shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Great concert tee. Yeah. All right, I think we should, uh, go hit Dave's house, show him the digs real quick, and then check out the, uh, the Fade Farm. You can let him know what you, what you might be working on. I mean, the list, the, the backstock list is like, absolutely huge uh next year is the four-year anniversary we've been producing one shirt a month for four years pretty much you know sometimes we might miss a month but man there's just so many good ideas and so many fans and and supporters that want you know me to touch on certain subjects that i just i'm just i'm trying really hard to just even produce two shirts a month yeah you know and yeah. And uh, I really, you know, shout out to everybody who's subscribed to my uh, my text list. Uh, that's the best way to stay in touch uh, with a drop. I send you one text every month. You know, it's just been a, it's just been awesome not having to pander to, uh, you know, social media as much and just send out that text to my subscribers and you get a really nice tee for forty six bucks that me and my Quality. assistant, uh, yeah, work hard on. So. Fire, man. Yeah. So, see you guys in Philly, and uh, let's go check out the house. Who's that? All right. It's uh, it's not completely natural looking yet. Well, I'm gonna wait for the bottom to blend in, and I feel like once it, yeah, like once the bottom looks like these Nas tees, maybe I think it will like, yeah, you know, blend. Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a way better shade of purple, huh? Right, it's like a heathery purple. Yep. Oh, or I think I told you I told you about it last time, like, under curing them and having the paint fall off, like this one over here, and then, I mean, the damn near looks like a vintage shirt.
Not that like that's what we're going for, but. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I'm just trying to. I'm trying to freaking, you know, dupe everybody. <laughs> Here's Berkshire, fading out. I did like a shoulder fade. His shoulder fade looked really good, but I feel like that's because uh, it's like a the the kind of shirt that it is. It's like a pro club. Yeah. But yeah, that one looked really good. good. Comparison. That's the flip. Oh, there's some up there too. Um, yeah, the ladder. Uh, I'm thinking the, the sweet spot is like two weeks, I think. Or it also just kind of depends on how faded you like your shirt, you know? Uh, That's two weeks on each side. Yeah. Do you take yeah. it in like when it rains or just leave it? Nope, or? let them all, you know, let the lightning hit them. Um, yeah, definitely let them really weather out. Uh, wash them a couple times. Fabric softener. The young, the young gen don't know about fabric softener. <laughs> that no, shit yeah, is amazing. I, I don't put a load in without fabric softener. Man, Come on. Funny. So, cleaned my car out one day and I just threw a bunch of stuff in the corner and didn't clean it up for like two weeks and there was a shirt, like there was a shirt sitting in the top of the pile. Pulled it out and it was just like, yeah, it started to fade. And I was just like, wow, okay, like, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see what happens with one. Well, remember all the uh, the shirts that used to be on the mannequins and station, like Swirly and all those ones? Mm-hmm. We still have faded ones from those. Yeah, and then, uh, so then like I put two of them out to fade, um, the Stone Cold and the Outcast one, and it just turned out great. Love wearing it, get a lot of compliments on it. Yeah, what's the reaction from the customers been? It can almost, it can almost overburn it, you know? Yeah. So like this is like with the, the PDF that I sell, but I feel like this was cooked for too long. Yeah. Like, uh, should have left it in for maybe like five seconds less. Have you thought about coming up with a method besides stabbing eight holes in every shirt? Well, the ones up there have staples. I mean, I, maybe that's open for interpretation on, on the YouTube comment section. How do you get the shirt flat and keep it flat? Well, my argument is I, I think it's almost, I mean, I, you, the, the flat fade is great for sure. But I'd like some of the time. I think I'd like the uh, that folded fade, the, like the one on the purple one over there, where it really like it. It's got different tones on different parts of the shirt. Some of the regular shirt kept and stayed true, like because that's what you see a lot of times. When you fall like because a lot of the faded shirts you find it's they were just folded sitting somewhere forever. Mm -hmm. So they do have weird fades. Mm -hmm. But this shit looks fucking clean. I mean, you can't argue with the finished product. Young Dave, man. This place is nuts. 